call the June Parks and Recreation Advisory Board meeting to order. Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise and join me. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, you're going to have to forgive me because it's been long enough that I have kind of almost completely forgotten how to get through one of these. So, but I can follow the I can follow the uh, the agenda here. So I'll turn it over to Sherry for roll call. Okay, Ed Heil here. Lori Present. Howell here. Jason Keogh here. Rick Knotts is excused. Ashley Pasquale here. Robert Smith is excused. Scott Welty here. Mark Z here. And Lauren Vetter. And Council Member Michelle Lynn. Here. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to deviate from the agenda, but I had I had permission to do so. In fact, orders to do so. But uh, I want to introduce the newest member of the board, Lori Howell. Lori uh, took the position that was vacated by Chuck Vaughn, who passed when he passed away in November. So. Um, so I want to welcome Lori to the board and um, would like to give you just a minute or two to, you know, to tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what, what made you decide to, to be part of this group. Um, thank you. Uh, my job in the community is at Mojave Community College. I t am the program coordinator for the Substance Abuse Counseling Program. And I've been a substance abuse counselor for about 20 years. And um, I don't like just doing the work I like to get involved with the communities I always work in and I'm not even I've never provided services here when I came in I went right over to the college and was teaching so um, so the way I've gotten involved with communities here uh, has been in the drug prevention coalition and so I was uh, part of the ground floor for the young adult development association of Havasu call it yada and um, so I I was a chair for that for a couple of years, and then I had to focus on my job again and uh, handed it over to my students, and now I'm back involved with that. And um, in that involvement, we have brought back the Walk Away From Drugs. We sponsored Hobbies Not Habits in March, which was awesome, by the way. And we were so happy that, we, that that took place right before all of this because we were hoping that families and kids had something to do that, you know, that participated in that, because there are a lot of easy at-home activities that they could do to keep themselves interested. Um, so we were pretty happy about the timing of all of that, really. Um, in the planning of all of that, uh, between the walk and the hobbies event, um, the mayor uh, got to know us a little bit, and he invited us to come say the Pledge of Allegiance at the council meeting. And I stuck around and w watched the entire council meeting, and that's when I heard there was an opening here. And I got super excited right away and had to ask myself why I was excited about it. And it just, I grew up in Parks and Rec. I take my niece all over the place, all the parks, and just enjoying all the act outdoor activities. And I thought, what a great compliment to the Drug Prevention Coalition, because we want to connect youth and families to what's going on here. And how better to do that than get involved myself? So uh, that's what brings me here, and I really look forward to learning a lot and uh, getting involved as much as possible. So thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you for that, Lori. Mm -hmm. It's, gonna, it's uh, great to have you on the team, and, uh, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Okay, so back in, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deviate again. Um, I, was, I was told at the beginning of the meeting that we may have some tricky mics, so if the mics go out, we'll have to start passing this guy around. Um, so, uh, so keep that in mind. If you're talking and the mic goes dead, hold up and we'll get the mic to you. Okay, now, I'll, uh, let's see, we're at number four on the agenda. This is call to the public. Anyone here would like to address the board? This is the time to do so. I see well, one member of the, the entire public nodding their heads no. <laughs> so uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll move on to agenda item number five, minutes from the February 24th, 2020 minute meet, uh, meeting. Any motion. question? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Wealthy, mo motion? Motion to approve. I'll second. All right, I have a, uh, a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the February 24th meeting. Any, any discussion? Uh, hear, 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 hearing none? Well, I don't even know what we do now. Okay. 
Uh, do we have to vote on the minutes? Yes. <laughs> okay, so um, those in favor of approval of the February 24th minutes, uh, aye. say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That takes us to number six. We're jamming right along. Uh, communications, announcements, and staff report. I'll turn it over to Mr. Keene for the staff report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Registration for July swim lessons will begin on June 23rd with lessons running July 6th through July 17th and again July 20th through July 31st. The Stingray swim team will begin practicing July 6th under United States swimming uh, guidelines and they, uh, they have very strict guidelines of when individuals can enter the facility, how they can enter the facility, the number of swimmers per lane, they are not allowed to utilize locker rooms at this time, uh, so they will be going straight from the pool to their vehicles. Uh, so just some added protections in there as well. Just wanted to throw that out there that we're not throwing a, a ton of, of people into the pool at, at one time uh, while we're still limiting our lap swim to uh, two swimmers per lane, and they have to start on opposite ends of the pool. Uh, as of now, the high school swim team will begin in August as usual. Practices will be the same as last year, and home meets will not begin until the last week of September uh, because of the excessive heat in our pool uh, area. Um, usually we have some, some meets early on in, in their season, and, and we've asked them to, to look at maybe going other places that have uh, better ventilation, air conditioning, uh, in their pool areas and, and we'll take kind of later in the season when it starts to cool down a little bit uh, just to help the swimmers themselves as well as uh, if spectators are allowed in the facility at that time uh, anybody that is watching and then we did add a 5 a.m. pickleball session uh, a note on events the 4th of July fireworks will be happening so uh, that's uh, good and then lastly our recreations supervisor Donna Best Carlton her last day will be July 1st after 30 plus years she'll be retiring uh, basically was one of the founding members of, of our Parks and Recreation Department here in Lake Havasu City so uh, we'll, we'll be it's a very sad day to see Donna walk out that door that's for sure she's uh, she's been an inspiration to many 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 people here in town and that concludes my report Uh, any questions or comments from members of the board on the staff report? Okay, thank you, Mr. Keene. We'll move right along to the uh, public hearing portion of the agenda. 7.1 is uh, COVID-19 discussion. So here, uh, kind of my intention is I'm just gonna go chronologically how everything is rolled since uh, we last met in February, what, uh, what the city did, what actions we took and then kind of what we're, what we're doing now and what we're looking at as far as a little bit into the future. Again, with this virus, nobody has or had a crystal ball and it, it was a very difficult time in, in trying to plan appropriately with all the precautions and, and looking at so many different resources. I, I did feel that at a time uh, many, many weeks, my whole job was simply to surf the internet to find out what everybody else was doing and, and what, uh, what this true virus was and how is it going to affect our community. Uh, so with that, you know, we based all our, our closing and openings and decisions were based on CDC guidelines, Arizona Department of Health, our governor, and our mayor's guidance. Uh, so March 16th really kind of kicked it off. That is the day we closed the Aquatic and Community Center. All events and meetings scheduled on city property and city facilities were canceled and team break was canceled. March 18th, Mayor Sheehy declared a local emergency. On March 24th, all city events, programs, and activities were canceled until further notice. On March 30th, the city suspended mooring of boats on the shores of the Bridgewater Channel. In Mar March 31st, Lake Havasu City takes additional steps to social distance. We closed our basketball courts, bocce ball courts, horseshoe pits, volleyball courts at all city parks, and then also closed the skate park. On April 4th, 
Our pickleball playgrounds and bathrooms were also closed. April 14th, pickle, picnic tables and ramadas were closed. April 15th, we, uh, we started virtual programming in order to give uh, our citizens some opportunities to participate in, in some of our programs. That included uh, exercise classes, cooking classes, Lego competition, coloring contest, uh, some fishing videos, uh, quite a few things were, uh, were done. And out of that came some things that we will continue to do uh, because of the success of them. Uh, one of them is our, we're filming our exercise classes daily and they're up on uh, Facebook Live and getting a tremendous response uh, for people that may not be able to leave their house or um, you know, prefer to exercise in, in, in their own, uh, own house as opposed to uh, coming out to the community center. Uh, and then we'll also continue to throw up uh, some little videos and other links where, where people can go to get activities to, uh, to do. On April 17th, Lake Havasu City participated in Governor Ducey's Light Arizona Blue campaign by lighting the London Bridge and Wheeler Park blue. On May 4th, we started to loosen up here and uh, the dog parks and some restrooms opened. The restrooms that were opened at this time were strategically place so that we could get to them to sanitize them within an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, so mostly they were the beaches, uh, Cypress Park, uh, Jack Hardy Park, uh, in that area so that we could get to them from uh, the maintenance facility as quick as possible and be able to return again uh, within the hour, hour and a half. Uh, May 15th, all city park amenities were reopened. On May 18th, the Aquatic Center uh, is, was open to lap swim only. On May 28th, the mooring in the Bridgewater Channel is allowed again. June 1st, swim lessons began, registration for summer, summer camp started, and group exercise restarted at the community center. On June 8th, summer camp started, outdoor, I'm sorry, open swim started, as well as indoor pickleball. On June 16th, our youth adventure camp started. Uh, I'm gonna kinda now, as we kinda have that chronological order there, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how and how we came to the decision to be able to reopen and, and what are our protocols. We spent many, many weeks uh, hashing out plans and uh, going back and forth with uh, the city manager and, and ensuring that we were making every attempt to be as cautious as we could and every precaution was in place. At the Aquatic Center, uh, for open swim, we're allowing a 25% capacity, which works out to 150 uh, individuals. Uh, whether they're swimming or not, they're, they're counted in that number. And that, that intention there is really just to, to be able to spread them out in the water. Uh, are you going to are two kids going to be able to social distance as they're playing? That's a very very difficult thing to do uh, So there is by limiting them the hope is just that you know, we're not have we're not packing them in like sardines um, We do have six foot circles at the check-in at the aquatic center. There's plexiglass hanging between the cashier and guest hand sanitizer is available at several different locations we do take several breaks during the day where we have absolutely nothing scheduled in the pool, uh, mainly so the lifeguards can go out and sanitize all railings, the locker rooms, uh, anything that anybody may touch uh, in the aquatic center. Uh, swim lessons, we l have limited to five participants per class and three classes at a time. The lower levels of our classes, our parent, we encourage the parents to be in the water to reduce the contact uh, between the instructor and the participant. The hot tub and soaker pools uh, still today remain closed. They're just two small bodies of water to, to be able to social distance. Uh, for camp, again, we went with a 25% capacity, so that limited our, our availability to 135 uh, youth in the community. And that was a very, very difficult decision to be made, uh, but it was one that we felt, one, we really wanted to get open to be able to uh, help some members that really needed to get back to work, 
Um, but at the same time, we couldn't just open it back up to the way that we were doing and having 600 kids in each school. There's only nine participants in each classroom based on CDC uh, numbers. We do temperature checks of participants and staff several times a day. We have outside check-in to be sure uh, that, that only staff and the participants are allowed in the facility. Parents or grandparents aren't walking in to check the child in. Everybody is outside. Um, unfortunately, we, we canceled all field trips as well, uh, just so that, um, again, that putting everybody back in the bus, the whole idea was to keep them in their nines as they move um, throughout the day. Uh, they only move when they go to lunch or when they go to the gym for PE. And then after that, everything is sanitized. Each classroom has its own PE bag so that they are the only ones, those nine are the only ones touching uh, anything in, in that bag. Uh, sanitizing equipment uh, is utilized uh, throughout the day on door handles, restrooms, and then uh, we disinfect the entire facility that, we're, that we've been using uh, daily. There are several, both the aquatic uh, realm of how that was going, as well as a, there's a couple of letters in your packet there that we sent out to the to the parents uh, for camp, and then our overall just camp plan uh, that explains that a little bit more in, in depth, uh, if you guys want to read that a little later. Um, we will be creating a completely new plan for our after school program moving forward. Uh, and we will be working with the school district on exactly how that's going to work because they, they're going to have some different limitations than what we put in and for the summer, as well as, again, no one has that crystal ball to know what, you know, August 2nd, August 3rd, as the kids go back to school, what does that look like in Arizona right now? So a um, lot of things, a lot of plans were put in place and changed and canceled. Uh, but I do feel staff uh, put forth a, a wonderful effort. Uh, they created some really, really good plans. And uh, as of today, uh, as far as we know, every, everything has, has been successful. Uh, there are a couple things that are still restricted. We uh, are not allowing any Ramada rentals down at the beach. Uh, it is a first come, first serve. Um, again, the reasoning being that 10 people um, as, as that magic number. Uh, we just didn't feel that if you're only having 10 people at, at the Ramada, it was it was truly worth reserving. You could you could uh, do the first come first serve just as easy. And then all events are still being restricted and evaluated on a case by case basis. And really, what we're doing for those events is asking the promoter to come to us with a plan of how are you going to uh, to abide basically by all the CDC and state requirements and, and recommendations. And then um, I look at those and then also take them up to our city manager and we have discussion on them of exactly how we might be able to do that. Uh, and then we continue to ask all residents to please social distance as much as possible, wash your hands regularly, stay home if you're sick, and wear a mask when social distancing is not possible. We, we saw a little bump in the last couple of weeks here in Arizona. This uh, really isn't going away. Uh, so we all need to do our part to, uh, to help you know, flatten that curve a little bit. So um, that is my COVID report. Uh, very, uh, very good, thanks, thanks for that. It, I think that was interesting, the, a little bump. We've, 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 we've hit records of uh, positive cases daily almost every day over the last week. So um, yeah, I believe this is, uh, this is something we're gonna have to address for some time to come. Any questions or comments from the board about, uh, uh, from his? No, Mr. Chair. Uh, no, I'd like to applaud you guys and all the hard work that you did, you know, to snap back and, and make sure everything's been cleaned every day and everything you did, just great job. I concur. I saw some of those videos out there and I think they were great. Yeah. Are you, even the ones for um, for some of the kids, you're gonna is that something you're gonna maintain also? Because those are wonderful. Yes, I, I would like to continue many of those uh, as we go through. I again, it's just something a little bit different, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I think uh, a lot of people appreciated them. So yeah. so we'll try to get some out. You know, maybe one or two a month or so. Right on. 
Thank you. Okay, uh, this is part of the public hearing um, portion of the agenda. If anyone from the audience would like to comment. Seeing none, we'll move on to uh, agenda item 7.2, a discussion on park improvements. Again, to you, Mr. Keene. Thank you. So since we have met last in February and going through the COVID uh, pandemic, our, our staff was definitely not just sitting around twindling their thumbs. Uh, we've got actually got quite a bit of work done over the spring. And uh, I'm gonna just kinda show you a few of those improvements that, that we have either completed or are currently working on uh, to hopefully finish up by the end of the year. Uh, the swim area buoys, uh, they were removed for a little while. The hardware uh, was basically just being dissolved in the water, uh, rusting through. So all the cabling and hardware were replaced on each buoy. We did not replace the buoys themselves. Uh, I know there, there's been some questions. There's a couple of them leaning over a little bit. Uh, but uh, we did not replace the buoys themselves, just the hardware in there. And that was completed right before Memorial Day, which was our goal. Uh, so on May 21st uh, this year. Uh, on this picture, you can kind of see the middle section of the slide is a little bit different color than the rest of it. Uh, this was due to, we needed to replace this section due to vandalism. Someone actually took a knife uh, through the bottom of this slide. So uh, it was closed temporarily even after we reopened the playground uh, because it was that section was deemed unsafe. Uh, but we were able to replace that middle section and completed that on June 11th. Uh, one of the biggest comments we get from, from the public is more signs at Rotary Park for no dogs. So we did uh, paint 70 signs in strategic locations on the concrete throughout the park, mainly when you get out of your vehicle as you're walking onto a ramp anywhere on the sidewalks, uh, entrances to the park, just trying to, to really emphasize uh, that there are no dogs allowed at, at Rotary. Uh, and those, those 70 signs were completed on June 2nd. We did also replace some of the, and added to um, just some of the hard signs that are actually uh, throughout the park as well. Uh, at London Bridge Beach, we did a whole refurbish of the basketball court. Uh, this project started as just a resurfacing of the the surface and the paint and as we were really getting into and evaluating the basketball rims and backboards not only were they old they were starting to fail so we uh, as the, you can see on the picture on the right we did replace them with uh, new glass backboards and breakaway rims the uh, <clears throat> excuse me the sur surface was re redone and we did add uh, pickleball lines onto those courts as well Again, the emphasis for this facility is basketball. However, uh, if there's an opportunity where basketball is not being played and the court is just sitting empty, it's, it's a good opportunity for the pickleball players to be able to play as well. Uh, and that was completed uh, May 30th uh, this year. All eight tennis courts at the high school were resurfaced. Uh, again, this is a, a joint agreement with the high school, so we pay half of this cost. But the project uh, was completed on June 3rd. The, um, and, and from what I've been told is, is the courts are uh, much better to play on. They are uh, not as fast, uh, which is the main reason that you resurface a tennis court is the ball doesn't travel as quickly and you don't travel as quickly as you're sliding from one side to the other. Uh, we are on, in the process of, again, from a community outreach uh, to, to our office and, and a couple to, during coffee with the mayor at creating two new bocce ball courts at Jack Hardy Park. So we're, we eliminated uh, two horseshoe pits. There are still four there, uh, but we'll be adding two, two bocce ball courts. Uh, concrete should be poured tomorrow, so we're hoping an estimated completion on um, but by July 1st on that project. London Bridge Beach will be changing over to effluent water. Uh, 
this has been in the works for many, many, many years uh, of just really trying to get our, our effluent projects up and running. Uh, so those purple water lines were laid from the water treatment plant there on the island uh, across the street and, and, and down Beachcomber towards London Bridge Beach and then eventually down uh, down the driveway there and we'll be hooking up to pipes that are already laid <coughs> excuse me laid in the park for effluent use and all the uh, the park will be watered now with effluent and I believe the completion date that they're they're looking for is by July 1st. Um, I know they're in some dye testing right now to be sure that everything is sealed up and, and ready to go. Uh, so that will, uh, the main thing it allows us to do, uh, and this kind of sounds weird, is but as we, we have to be able to dispose of water as well. So this is a very easy way um, for as we treat the water and we make effluent, we have to be able to dispose of it. And uh, by, by watering our parks, it saves not only our, our fresh water, uh, for our residents, but allows us to get rid of our, our effluent as well. The water is perfectly safe, uh, so it's, it's not going to harm anybody or any uh, animals. So. Uh, Cypress Park, we are reseeding the upper field. Uh, as you can kind of see, some of the bare spots are starting to fill in. Uh, and then we are also adding a booster pump for added water pressure. When the facility was constructed, the thought was it would be, it would start off on reuse water or be there fairly soon. So the, the water pressure at the field wasn't considered to be an issue. Uh, that project has now been pushed off uh, and could be several years before um, the reuse water makes it up to, to Cyprus. So we felt it important uh, to be able to get the, the water pressure that the park was intended um, to be sure that each of the heads is reaching the zones and areas that they're supposed to. Uh, so this field is closed. It will remain closed until uh, our parks and our turf specialists believe that uh, it is strong enough to hold, uh, hold up to the soccer use. Uh, and so that, that could still be uh, several more months. Uh, I'm not, I don't exactly have a date on that one. Uh, we'll be changing out many of our signs in both parks. Uh, this is kind of a design that you'll see uh, welcoming you and thanking you for visiting each of our parks. Then throughout the parks as well, we'll be using our own sign shops to create more of the wayfinding and the signs that just have words on them. Uh, so, and that project will hopefully wrap up by uh, the 1st of August. And that concludes my presentation on some additional park improvements. Thanks for that report, Mr. Keene. You, you guys have been busy. <laughs> Any questions or comments from the board? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I got a couple of them. How many times a year do you reseed that Cypress? Is this the first time we've reseeded it? Yes, we, we do overseed uh, in the fall and, and when the grass is changing from uh, Bermuda to rye. Uh, and that's what brings it back to that green. But this is the first time where we've actually closed that that park and, and had to fully reseed it. And you reverse it from rye back to Bermuda? It, yes, it does it, that part naturally. Does that, get, does that get aerated before you see? It gets aerated several, several times a year. Uh, I, I want to say every two months or so. I'm smiling, by the way. Good. I'm always <laughs> smiling. You just can't. Oh, you can? Yeah, yeah <laughs> my age, you said? You see it in my age? No, I'm joking. <laughs> And then uh, the dogs in Rotary. Uh, someone asked me if um, small dogs in strollers are allowed um, or not. I wasn't sure. I said, as far as I know, no animals are allowed at the park. Correct, unless they are service animals. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair? Yeah. Let me get closer. The signs at the end reminded me of maybe a year ago, there was a young man that presented to us some ideas for signage along the channel. And I. Um, sad to say, I, we lost track of that. So, do you the, is that his design or his idea? No, uh, his signs are up throughout the channel. Oh, uh, the okay. Eagle Scout. Um, his signs were for identification of where you're at, mainly for um, public safety personnel. Mm -hmm. Each of the signs has a, has a number to it. Okay. Uh, 
Um, and so his his design was really kind of a map of the channel, and they are on both sides of, oh. of the channel currently. Oh, that reminded me, was there a special system that went into mapping that sign system out on the channel? I looked at it, and it, it might just be me, but I thought we might be missing a couple numbers, or it, it, it's, it, it, it goes one way and comes back the other way. Can you clarify? Yes, odds are on one side of the channel, even are on the other. Perfect. Thank you so much. I just have one more. Thank you. Tomorrow's city council meeting, um, I understand you'll be adopting or considering adoption of the budget. And we had a lot of conversation of, and recommendations. And understandably, a lot of that needs to be pulled back. Could you give us a little update on the in and out? Uh, yeah. Uh, we had, I will say, most of our projects have, have been moved to plan B. Uh, and, and kind of what this plan B is really is waiting until January so we can get a few more months of this fiscal year under our belts and determine how much are we impacted by um, revenue wise by the COVID virus. And while we see Lake Havasu City is being is very busy <laughs> every week here, uh, it almost feels like a holiday weekend. And I'm sure our, our sales tax numbers, you know, from that are up. Um, part of our state shared revenues are definitely going to uh, to take a hit. The the whole state in general uh, economy isn't exactly as boisterous as it as it was before we went. So we really want to get a feeling for where that that sits. So the way this budget was was kind of developed was almost two budgets, uh, where we have the first section, or we're just going to kind of maintain and cruise through, and then hopefully uh, that revenue is there and it comes back. And then in January, uh, we'll be able to initiate kind of plan B. And that's where, where the majority of our projects will fall. Uh, with that, I will say there is one, uh, one exception. That is the pickleball courts will still be, they are fully funded and, and will start. Uh, that, um, that bidding process should start here in the next couple weeks uh, that that'll be advertised and go out. Before we jump off of that. Uh, topic. What about the air conditioning um, projects for the aquatic center? Are those still? Uh... Yep, uh, those are still in our CIP plan. So in the upcoming fiscal year, 2020-2021, is the engineering and design work. Uh, so there's almost, I believe, $200,000 or so there. And then the following year is actually the implementation and, and uh, purchasing the equipment uh, to do to, uh, construct that HVAC in the, at the facility. Okay, so but it still seems like that's intact for- Yes, okay. yes it is currently. Good. That's good to hear. Okay, any other questions or comments from the board? You had one, Scott. I know you did. I did. Go okay, ahead. all right. This is also part of the public hearing. Any uh, questions or comments from the public? None, seeing none. Um, we'll move on to item number eight, future discussion items. Mark has nothing. No, I, um, I know a couple months ago uh, I had mentioned something about maybe taking a look at the pros and cons, you know, not this year, of course, but uh, for making some of our basketball courts up in the high mountain neighborhoods full courts instead of half courts and maybe putting a basketball court by the aquarium, aqua center, I mean, uh, between the baseball field and the aqua center and maybe next time or something you, you put in discussion we can look at the pros and cons of that? Yeah, uh, I, we certainly can. Uh, again, with budget this year, uh, project-wise, is going right. to be, be very tight. But uh, it is definitely something on my radar of, of looking at uh, where exactly the best location for, the, for additional basketball would be located. Cool. Thank you so much. And then can I just say one thing? I don't know if this is the right time, but this might be my only, my last meeting. This is my last meeting for my term. And I reapplied for another term, of course, because I just love it. I like all you guys. I like everyone. I like being a part of the community and helping out. So hopefully tomorrow night's meeting, they'll, they'll vote me in again, and you guys won't lose me. But you might, if I don't get voted in again, I might just show up over there just to, for <laughs> nits and griddles, you know? It's a sales pitch. Yeah, it's a sales pitch. It's a, no voters are here, though, right now. So <laughs> but thank you. 
One voter's here, one voter's here. Uh, any other members? Uh, so, go ahead. I, said, I, I think we've talked about this before, so I'm sure it's on a list for the future. Um, just eventually, I don't know how now, but um, learning about the city council or mayor and city managers' um, plans for us. What does this, what, ad, what are we advising from this board? It would be really great to have that discussion at some point when we can. Yes, that is definitely on our list. Okay. Okay, so I have I have one thing. Any, any, do you have any any requests? So I have one thing that may help. It may move us into the the next item on the agenda, and that is, uh, I missed the February meeting, but it seems like there was quite a bit of discussion about the changes that were um, that were uh, suggested by through through the council uh, a move into quarterly meetings, and 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 I believe the the most of the members that were present w weren't in favor of that plan. So. Um, so maybe we can hear more about about that the direction. Well, that recommendation was definitely made both to the city manager as well as to mayor and council. Uh, okay. So, th so they have definitely heard heard that direction from from this board. Okay, but nothing has so so no, nothing, nothing has, has come, come back, back yet okay. on, on that. Again, COVID kind of really took over yeah. uh, a, a lot of that, and, and most of the council meetings were really just the, the bare necessities of what we needed to do to continue business as the public weren't allowed to really give a whole lot of input. Okay, understandable. So uh, so then I guess we'll move into section nine, future meetings is our next meeting in one month or two months or three months from now. <laughs> well, uh, we, we do have a conflict as I will be out of town uh, July 27th, which, which is our next scheduled meeting. Uh, this room is available July 20th if we would want to push it forward a week or uh, we could cancel it and our next meeting would be August 24th. So I, I'll leave that up to, to the board and the chair. Any, any discussion from the board? I'm good with moving it up a week to July 20th. So keep it in July? Yeah, I'm good with that. Anyone not want to keep it in July? Okay, so I think we're good with J July 20th, if we can make that work. Okay, that leaves uh, item number 10. Anyone care to make a motion to adjourn? <laughs> I move that we adjourn. And a second? I second it. All right. All in Aye. favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>